Welcome back to the Explanation Pro. Today I'll recap a historical war film called, The 800. Spoilers incoming. The movie is set in 1937, during the Second Sino-Japanese War when soldiers were ordered to defend the Sahang Warehouse, which is across the international settlement of Shanghai, to show the citizens and foreigners that the National Revolutionary Army is still standing. A group of soldiers marches through the fields and one of them mentions that they're on the way to Shanghai. From afar, a burning city can be seen. They eventually reach the city, where there is nothing but ruins. The soldiers line up and are confused as the city is empty and destroyed. They start to argue among themselves about what to do as one of them suggests they go back. A young boy named Xiao Hubei tells his uncle that his brother is by the ruins. His uncle then tells him to stay where he is while he goes to his brother. Xiao Hubei's brother, Duan Wu, climbs the ruins and sees that there are Japanese soldiers ahead. The Japanese spot him and charge toward the Chinese soldiers, killing most of them. Later that night, the three of them hide as members of the NRA shoot some Chinese soldiers and accuse them of being deserters. They see the army march through the streets as they hide and Duan Wu tells his uncle that they should just join them and tell them that they fell behind. His uncle then snaps at him that they would just be labeled as deserters. The three of them eventually join the machine gun company, with other soldiers that are apparently deserters as well. They are led to the Sahang warehouse, where they get on the nerves of one of the soldiers there named Commander Zhu. Zhu then sends them outside the warehouse to be executed but the colonel tells him to have the group fix the defenses outside instead. Duan Wu tells Colonel Xie and tells him that they aren't deserters, but are sent by the Wangpi country headquarter and were left behind. Another young soldier calls Xiao Hubei while the colonel still sends Duan Wu outside. While they work on the fortifications outside, a soldier sounds the alarm that there's a situation nearby and everyone is told to get down. They eventually realize that the approaching group aren't the Japanese but are Chinese refugees headed for the international Shanghai settlement. Duan Wu's uncle then tells him to grab Xiao Hubei and follow him before he sneaks among the refugees. Duan Wu simply watches him before he's told to get back to work. The uncle reaches the settlement gates but isn't allowed to enter because he's a soldier. He tries to tell the guard that he's just a farmer but he still gets turned away because he's wearing a uniform. Back in the warehouse, the soldiers begin to unload some supplies when a singing voice reaches from the settlement. They watch the singer on the other side. Xiao Hubei is then introduced properly to the colonel by the young man named Xiao Cheyui, who he befriends. Xiao Cheyui tells Xiao Hubei that if he dies, then he'll take Cheyui's place. Xiao Hubei looks at the settlement and is mesmerized by its beauty. Meanwhile, the soldiers find a small hole hidden behind boxes. They go through the hole and see a white horse locked inside an indoor stable. They open the gate to pet the horse but it gets away and runs out to the warehouse. The other soldiers are surprised by the horse and almost shoot but Xiao Cheyui whistles and eventually calms the horse down. He then calls Xiao Hubei and introduces him to the horse. In the settlement, refugees fill the streets as more of them arrive. A truck then stops in the middle of the street and is crowded with the refugees to receive emergency supplies. They then begin to hear explosions and see the Japanese taking over a building and waving their flags as they shoot down Chinese soldiers. A professor watches the battle on the other side happen while his wife gambles inside their house with her friends. The Japanese soldiers go closer to the Sahang warehouse. They manage to get inside the building before the gate is closed and they're ambushed. There's gunfire inside the warehouse while the citizens in the settlement look over, worried for their safety. Duan Wu's group, which is still referred to as deserters by the other soldiers, is let out of a room and tasked to help clear the bodies and kill any Japanese that are still alive. One member of the group tries to escape but is then shot down. The Chinese soldiers begin looting the Japanese's armor and weapons. One Japanese soldier detonates a bomb in a last attempt to take down some of the Chinese soldiers. Then, the Japanese outside the warehouse start to throw canisters of mustard gas inside the building. The soldiers start to pee on cloth and use it to cover their faces. A higher officer yells at Duan Wu to hurry up, but he isn't able to relieve himself so the officer shoves a gas mask to his face. The gas gets expelled from the building and is reaching towards the settlement, causing the citizens to panic. Inside the warehouse, the soldiers are still scrambling to remove all the toxic gas inside. Duan Wu gets pushed over and falls towards the underground canal. He swims towards the tunnel and sees the other end of it then goes outside. 
A Chinese civilian, Mr. Fang, approaches the Japanese soldiers and tells them information about the regiment inside the warehouse. The Japanese colonel then orders another attack on the warehouse. The Chinese soldiers find some of the Japanese soldiers still alive and gather them. The horse runs out the warehouse, catching the attention of the civilians. Outside, the Japanese ask them to surrender and show them some Chinese soldiers tied to poles. The Japanese tell them that they will have the same fate if they don't give up but the Chinese don't listen. Duan Wu looks outside and sees that one of the tied soldiers is his uncle, who yells at him to take care of Xiao Hubei and survive. Duan Wu's group is armed and lined up in front of the living Japanese soldiers and tasked to shoot them. Some of them try to reason with the commander to escape but the commander pushes them to as the Japanese taunt them. When it was Duan Wu's turn, he hesitates to kill. Another soldier drags him near one of the Japanese soldiers, who is a young man. The other Chinese soldier tells him that these soldiers killed his uncle and Duan Wu pulls the trigger. Later, Duan Wu asks to be allowed to return home but is denied. Xiao Cheyui gives Xiao Hubei a snack from the settlement. Hubei asks him why the horse listens to him and Cheyui says he's not sure but that animals always listen to him even before then. Duan Wu goes back to the tunnels with two other companions. They then see the Japanese enter from the other side of the tunnel and they hide underwater. The Japanese soldiers all pass by them and Duan Wu resurfaces. He then sees that one of his companions drowned. He and his other remaining companion then exit the tunnels and inform everyone that the Japanese are inside the warehouse. The Chinese soldiers manage to defeat the Japanese and the civilians praise Duan Wu and his companion for being heroes. Despite these, they are still not allowed to cross over into the settlement. A group of schoolboys then decide to join the army in the warehouse. Duan Wu and his companion returns to the warehouse but are still scolded by their colonel as it's against the rules to go outside the warehouse without permission. The soldiers then find the schoolboys inside the warehouse. Duan Wu and the other members of his group are then tasked to go out and fix the defenses. One of them says that only two of them should go out as the Japanese are too close. The next morning, the Japanese approach and Mr. Fang tells the civilians that they are going to invade the Sahang warehouse in three hours. The foreigners start placing bets on the battle while Mr. Fang says that he doesn't gamble. The other civilians scramble because of the news while some wait and watch over the other side. The attack happens and the Chinese are slowly being overwhelmed. The deserters are then asked to fight and Duan Wu is handed a weapon. The Japanese bring an excavator to tear down the warehouse. Xiao Cheyui then fires an explosive at the excavator and burns it. Xiao Hubei hears the horse and peeks out a window. Xiao Cheyui calls him out and tells him to get down. Hubei tells him what he saw and Cheyui peeks out as well. He gets shot and dies. The Chinese soldiers begin to use different strategies to fight back such as using mirrors to see the enemy and strapping explosives on themselves and charging toward the Japanese. More men follow this method as they tie the explosives to themselves and jump from the building after yelling out their names and hometown. Some civilians cross to the warehouse hiding under a Nazi flag to deliver some food, medicine, and a phone line. The person carrying the phone line was shot and several volunteers tried to get it across to the warehouse as a Japanese sniper shot them one by one. One of the civilians is Mr. Fang, who is a journalist. Mr. Fang starts filming the soldiers while the other civilian asks Colonel Xie how many soldiers are in the warehouse. Although there are only 420 of them, he exaggerates the number to 800. One of the deserters steals Mr. Fang's coat and tries to escape but Duan Wu catches him. Later that night, Xiao Hubei grieves over Xiao Cheyui. Commander Zhu tells him to just eat so he won't miss home and offers him a drink. Xiao Hubei aggressively eats and ignores him. Zhu goes to one corner to drink where Xiao Hubei approaches him and takes the bottle. He then looks over the settlement while he drinks as a theater play happens. Meanwhile, a huge donation collection happens in the settlement. The other civilians start to slingshot supplies towards the warehouse. The casino owner donates a flag. The girl guide crosses to the warehouse and takes the flag there. She climbs up through a rope and Duan Wu tries to help her up before a bullet grazes his neck. He calls for Xiao Hubei as he thinks he's dying. Xiao Hubei later finds his brother and calls him a hero. Colonel Xie then rallies the troops and tells them that the Generalissimo orders them to defend the warehouse for two more days to gain international attention. However, if they raise the flag donated to them, 
then the Japanese would fight back more aggressively and they wouldn't last for hours. Although the soldiers have mixed answers, they eventually decide to raise the flag. Colonel Xie then tells the soldiers to gather their last words and let the girl guide take them to their families. The deserters are then tasked to raise the flag the next morning. They perform the flag raising ceremony. The civilians see this and cheer them on. Later, the Japanese arrive and the Chinese soldiers prepare to fight. Japanese fighter planes begin their attack, targeting to take down the flag. The Chinese soldiers can hold out and eventually, the planes start firing on civilians in the settlement. The foreigners warn them that if they continue, then they will be considered committing an act of war. Eventually, the flagpole falls. The soldiers are then ordered to not attack and to avoid unnecessary sacrifices. However, they still raise the flag back and defend it. The Japanese are then told to retreat. Duan Wu celebrates their retreat before he realizes that he's been shot. Xiao Hubei rushes to the dying Duan Wu but is held back. Duan Wu begins to mutter about their plans once they get to Shanghai. One of their plans was to take a photo together. The colonel calls on Mr. Fang and asks him to take a photo of Duan Wu as he dies. The next morning, Colonel Xie rides on the white horse as he meets with the Japanese colonel, who rides on a black horse. The Japanese colonel informs them that a new commander will be replacing him and that they get to have one last battle. The British put a red cross flag outside the gates of the settlement, marking it as a safe zone. As they prepare for the battle, the colonel tells them to boil water from the river and use it to wash. The Chinese soldiers in Sahang warehouse are then given an order to retreat to the settlement at midnight. Colonel Xie says that if he persists in defending the warehouse then the international community might offer help but he's told that foreign countries have no interest in helping them. That night, as the searchlights turn off, the soldiers begin preparing to retreat while some of them stay behind to defend. The Japanese turn on their searchlights and fire a flare to light up the area, allowing them to attack the soldiers. Meanwhile, the volunteers approach the Japanese camp. The Japanese warn them to stop but they carry on and the Japanese start to shoot. The Chinese soldiers start to cross and the Japanese open fire. The civilians then start their own efforts of helping as some fire their guns on the Japanese while some donate medical supplies. Colonel Xie gets shot and he orders all the soldiers to cross at once. They do so and the civilians cheer them on. The movie ends by showing the white horse emerging from the ruins of Sahang warehouse before showing modern day Shanghai, now an advanced city, with the warehouse still standing. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.